make a water filled cavity and that water filled cavity is called retinal edema we have learned about the two terminologies the first one was microaneurysms the focal dilatation here in the black marker and if the microaneurysm is there then first of all the plasma which have the least density will come out of this and it will make a water filled cavity and that water filled cavity in the retinal tissue is called retinal edema so this is the second important term of the microvascular leakage and now after that edema is there and now we will discuss about the hard exudates right what is actually the pathophysiology what is actually the logic what is actually the story behind the formation of the hard exudates you know that plasma is there and plasma is out of it and now plas if plasma is out of it then it will make a retinal edema right so after retinal edema plasma is out and now with the plasma and you can say after the plasma the plasma protein will come out of this right i can raise this because retinal edema is we have learned about the retinal edema and now we will learn about the pathophysiology of the hard exudates right so plasma protein because the plasma have come out already and now plasma protein will come out of it when the plasma protein will come out of in the retinal tissue then what will happen you know that as i said the retinal tissue is actually a red zone the sensory retina is actually a red zone and whenever anything will come out in the retinal tissues the retina will consider it at foreign body you can never penetrate in the red zone of your country because that is red zone you are not allowed to go without a permit right without permission now the plasma protein mr plasma protein will come out of the red zone without any permission and now our defense mechanism our defense army which are red blood sorry white blood cells they will fight with the plasma protein they will consider our white blood cells will consider this plasma protein as foreign invaders right that they, they will think that the terrorists have come and we have to protect our sensory retina we have to protect our country right so the defense mechanism or the white blood cells will fight with plasma proteins so at this level at this retinal patch at this tissue of the retina the fight will start and the fight is between white blood cells wbcs plus lipoproteins or the plasma proteins so now they will fight some of the white blood cells will die some of the lipoprotein will die some of the plasma protein will die so all the dead bodies of three of them will accumulate and deposit at the sensory retina and that dead bodies that deposition of the dead bodies of the white blood cells of the lipoprotein and the plasma proteins these dead bodies which are deposited at the retinal tissue these are called hard exudates so this is actually the story behind the formation of the hard exudates you know that the hard exudates are the smaller in size yellowish in the color with the distinct margins you have to keep it in mind these are differences we will make a difference between hard and soft exudates what are the characteristics of the hard exudates the hard exudates are smaller in size they are somehow yellowish in color and most importantly they have distinct margins right so these are called the hard exudates so we have discussed about we have learned about the pathophysiology the story behind the formation of the hard exudates and now we will learn another microvascular leakage that is called the retinal hemorrhages which is most important right you know that what is actually a hemorrhage and uh, suppose if blood is come out in any of the uh, body tissue that is called hemorrhage if blood is coming out in the brain from the blood vessels of the brain then it will cause brain hemorrhage 
if the blood is come out if the red, red blood cells will come out uh, in the retina from the retinal blood vessels then it will cause the retinal hemorrhages and now we are learning about the retinal hemorrhages so we have discussed about the microaneurysms again we have discussed about uh, the retinal edema due to the plasma uh, due to the plasma we have discussed about the hard exudates which are due to the plasma proteins and lipoproteins and now we will discuss about the hemorrhages you know that we have discussed about the plasma we have discussed about uh, now we will discuss about the red blood cells and suppose if the microaneurysm is too weak or you can say the wall of the capillary is too weak then the blood will come out the rbcs will come out in the retinal tissues and if the rbcs will come out of the retinal tissues the blood will accumulate in the retinal tissues and that accumulation of the blood in the retinal tissues which are which have came out which are come out of the capillaries this accumulation of blood in the retinal tissue is called retinal hemorrhages retinal hemorrhages so these are called the retinal hemorrhages you know that there are different types of the retinal hemorrhages there are three different types of the retinal hemorrhages the first one is called the flame shaped hemorrhages you know that uh, the shape of the retina sorry the shape of the hemorrhage in the retina is like the flame right so those hemorrhages those blood in the retinal tissues are called the flame shaped hemorrhages and another difference is always the flame shaped hemorrhages or the flame shaped hemorrhage is always at the superficial layers of the retina is actually at the retinal nerve fiber layer you know the retinal if you are coming anterior to posterior the first structure is and the you can say the most superficial structure is or the layer of the retina is retinal nerve fiber layer so the flame shaped hemorrhages would be at the superficial layers of the retina which is the retinal nerve fiber layer right and other type of the hemorrhage is called uh, the dot and blot hemorrhages you know that the dot and blot hemorrhages are uh, the uh, red patches at the level of the retina right and these dot and blot hemorrhages are actually uh, at the deeper layer at the middle layers you can say at the middle layers of the retina right so these are called dot and blot hemorrhages dot first a drop of blood will come out of the capillary it will make a drop and that drop will penetrate that drop will separate in the deeper layers of the retina right so these kinds of hemorrhages are called dot first it will make a dot and then it will make a blotting first a drop of the blood will come out it's a dot hemorrhages then that drop of blood will separate in the deeper layer so that hemorrhage is called the dot and blot hemorrhages and the finally the last one is called the dark blot hemorrhages the dark blot hemorrhages are older hemorrhages and they are in the most deeper layers of the retina so those layers sorry the those hemorrhages of the retina are called the dark blot hemorrhages so that was all about the microvascular leakage and now i can repeat the whole lecture in few minutes like first we have discussed about the arterial system we have three different pathways of the retina for the arterial system the first one was central retinal artery the second one was short posterior ciliary artery and the third one is serial retinal arteries and then we have discussed about uh, you can say the barriers blood retinal barriers the first barrier was outer blood retinal barrier and what was the position what was the location of the outer blood retinal barriers that was at the level of retinal pigmented epithelium right this is called the outer blood retinal barrier and what about the inner blood retinal barrier the inner blood retinal barrier is actually at the level of the capillaries the capillaries had pericytes pericytes develop the structural integrity of the capillary and blood will confined in the capillary they will not come out of it right the blood will not come out of it and that structural integrity is due to the pericytes so that structural integrity that barrier is called the inner blood retinal barriers so now after that we have discussed about the microvascular leakage right in the diabetic retinopathy right so in diabetic retinopathy the first hallmark sign is called the microaneurysms you know that if the pericytes are lost then a focal dilatation and out pouch is there an out pouch would be there in the capillaries level that out pouch is called the microaneurysms and if from the microaneurysms if the plasma is come out the water will 
the water filled cavity will become at the level of retinal tissue right due to the plasma due to the secretion of the plasma that water filled cavity is called retinal edema and if that is microneurisms we have discussed about microneurisms we have discussed about retinal edema now the hard exudates if the plasma protein will come out the retinal white blood cells will consider it as foreign invader and it will fight now the fight will become between the white blood cells between the lipoprotein between the plasma proteins they will die and their dead bodies will deposit at the level of the retinal tissues these dead bodies which are yellow in color which are smaller in size and they have distinct margins these dead bodies with the same characteristics as i have mentioned these are called the hard exudates and now what about the um, you know hemorrhages if the red blood cells will come out of the microaneurysms then it will cause retinal hemorrhages there are three different types of hemorrhages first one is flame shaped which is at the nerve fiber layer second one is called dot and blot and it is in the middle layers of the retina Th third one is called the dark blot which is in the deeper layer of the retina hope you are clear in the next video we will discuss further different signs further different symptoms further different types of the diabetic retinopathy like background like pre-proliferative like proliferative like maculopathy a lot of things in the diabetic retinopathy see you in the next video